Hello again. Now, a uh, small reminder again about me and its anterior and medial structures. And after these structures, I will take a look to the rectus femoris because it's very interesting, and I will show you rectus femoris too. In the anterior side of the knee, we can find the cartilage, the distal quadriceps with the quadricipital tendon, patellar tendon, as we can see in this amazing cadaveric view. Okay? And let's take a closer look to the quadricipital tendon. As we, you can see, it has three layers. The most superficial is formed by the rectus femoris. The intermediate by the rectus medialis and rectus lateralis. And the deep one by the vastus intermedius. Okay? Always check tendons in the long axis and in, sorry, and in the short axis too. Okay? Because if we don't uh, do, we, we will, uh, if we don't check both sides, both axes, we will lose information, very, very important information. Okay. Now we are going to see other structures, fat pads. We, ha we have listened about half a fat pad. There are two more fat pads in the anterior side of the knee. The prefemoral fat pad here with this round shape and the suprapatellar fat pad with this triangular shape. Between these two fat pads, we'll find the recess of the knee joint. It's an important location because of injections <coughs> at this place. If we continue distal, we will see the patellar tendon. The patellar tendon, as you can see here, always must be checked in both axes. Okay? It's very, wi very wide, so we need to perform all this scan of the tendon, not to miss any injury. Below the patellar tendon, we will find the hofa fat pad. As you can notice here, filling this void between the femur, tibia, and patellar bone. And with a very important um, function in the met metabolism of the patellar tendon. About the medial side of the knee, uh, most important structure, if we are uh, performing ultrasound, is medial collateral ligament. The medial collateral ligament has two fascicles. The deep fascicle is a small fascicle located here. It's a capsular thickening and it merges. It's a, it's, it has a very close relationship with the medial meniscus. Okay? It has two components, the menisco femoral component and the menisco tibial component. Above this, this fascicle, we will find the superficial fascicle. We will turn it transparent to see all the both structures. Okay. Its origin is just below the epicondyle, the medial epicondyle, and its insertion is six, seven centimeters above, above the knee joint. The, the pesan salinos covers the, the superficial layer of the collateral, medial, medial collateral tendon. Remember that the pesas serinus is formed of three tendons, the sartorius, the gracilis, and the semitendinosus. The posterior aspect of the superficial component is also um, joins also the, the medial meniscus. To finish the rectus femoris, it's a very special muscle. In quick, quick sports, it gets injured, and it has uh, like two components, they're not sure if that is really two components, eh? but they're two components like, with an inner muscle and outer, outer muscle, and its origin is very complicated, with three tendons, okay? This outer muscle will form, this, uh, the perif uh, peripheric fascia of this outer muscle will form the direct tendon, and its insertion is in the anterior inferior iliac spine. And the inner muscle will form the indirect tendon. Okay. Is the central tendon will form this indirect tendon, and its insertion is in the acetabulum. 
last tendon, the reflected tendon, is not inf important nowadays. Okay? We'll not talk about it. OK. To examine this uh, structure, this, this muscle, we will begin here at this image of the distal rectus femoris, and we will go proximal. And we will assess how it evolves. We place the probe here, between the proximal third and the medial third of the thigh, the anterior side of the thigh, searching this structure, the rectus femoris with its central tendon. Very easy to see, it's a landmark, OK? Then we will progress proximal, and we will notice how the muscle gets smaller, but we can still see the central tendon. If we continue proximal, we will notice the appearance of this acoustic shadow. This acoustic shadow is the reflected tendon going deep. The, sorry, the indirect tendon going deep to the acetabulum. So this is a, an artifact called acoustic shadow here. So, and if we continue, we will notice a hyperechoic, very well-defined line. This is the anterior, anterior inferior iliac spine with insertion of the direct tendon in the short axis. Once we have this image, we will turn the probe 90 degrees, and we will see this structure by ultrasound with this nice image of the insertion of the direct tendon in the anterior inferior iliac spine. You can notice here the shadow of the indirect tendon, OK? And can we assess the indirect tendon by ultrasound? There's a challenging technique I will show you. It's not mine, huh? but I learn. We start here at the short axis of the direct tendon, and we move slightly distal to see the, in the shadow of the indirect tendon. Remember the image we, we have just seen? Okay, this is the shadow. Then the movement is to go lateral without losing this shadow. So it's difficult, this technique, but we will try. And with this, angula uh, with, with this rotation of the probe of 30 degrees, because we need to, to be in the same axis as the indirect tendon is. Okay? If, if we are properly located, we'll find this image here, the insertion of the indirect tendon. Okay? This is the acetabulum. OK, let's go. To assess the anterior knee, we usually place the patient with the knee slightly flexed, thank you very much, to uh, get the, the structure, the anterior structure tense, to avoid uh, the um, relaxing of these structures, to avoid the artifact of the anisotropy artifact, okay? Perfect. I usually begin in the long axis, OK, here you can see this is the quadricipital tendon. This is the, sup the superior patellar bone. And this is the quadricipital tendon. If we move slightly the probe, we can notice several layers. The most superficial one, this one, is the rectus femoris layer. OK? And this is the intermediate one. This is the bastus medialis and bastus lateralis la layer. And this is the more, this is the more deep. The deeper one here, the deeper one, is the vastus intermedius. As we go proximal, you will notice here the vastus intermedius muscle and its saponeurosis just above the, the muscle. Okay? If we still go proximal, we will notice the, the end of the rectus femoris and its saponeurosis below the muscle, OK? You can see very, very well here the aponeurosis of the rectus femoris. Now, the three layers are very, very good in this image, OK? And if we continue distal,
we will realize how all the extensor tendons continue. You can see there. Okay, they continue to the patellar tendon. So there is a continuity in all the extensor mechanism. Okay, perfect. Once we have checked in the long axis the quadricipital tendon, then we turn the probe 90 degrees, and we will see the quadricipital tendon in the short axis. Don't be afraid; it's normal to see and not, not to dis distinguish the components because the uh, the tissue between the, the structure, the aponeurosis, is hyperechoic, and in, if you are perpendicular, the tendons are, per, are hyperechoic too. So you can use anisotropy to help you here distinguish the structures. Now you can see the rectus femoris, the vastus, inter, uh, the intermediate component with the vastus uh, lateralis and medialis, and the Rectus in, uh, vastus intermedius aponeurosis, okay? And the, the fatty tissue between these structures is still hyperechoic. I know this is medial because this is a big muscle, this is the vastus medialis, and this is the small vastus lateralis, okay? I'm too distal, so we don't have rectus femoris or vastus intermedius here. If we go proximal, then we will notice, first of all, the vastus intermedius here, and here, this round muscle will be the rectus femoris. If we continue with rectus femoris, we will find our beloved central tendon. Okay? Perfect. Again, in, short, in long axis, now we are going to check the prefemoral fat pad here with this round shape and the suprapatellar fat pad here with this triangular shape. Try to um, forget it. If we move, like, slightly flex the, the knee. Now, a little bit more. Yes. We have retracted the prefemoral fat pad, and you can see here the recess with this small amount of liquid. And a small quantity of, li of liquid can be pre present in normal people. Okay? This is the cartilage of the femur. Okay. We can assess the, the trochlear cartilage, the femoral cartilage, asking the patient to flex completely the knee and examine the cartilage, okay? In the short axis and in the long axis. All this anechoic structure is the cartilage. We need to assess its, inte its integrity, its um, anechoic, because it's like uh, water, huh? and uh, the integrity of the bone beneath the cartilage. Okay. You can also check a small amount of, of, of uh, patellar cartilage, but it's not very uh, interesting. I will show you just to do, just relax. Okay. If we place the probe here, we move the patella medial, and we place the probe here. Here you can see the, the patellar cartilage, but only a small amount of the medial side. The lateral side is, is, is more difficult to, to assess because of the lateral side of the trochlea, which is by far more um, large and uh, uh, gets us difficult to see this area. Okay, again. Perfect. Now, Patellar tendon here, thank you. We start again with the probe in the long axis, in the, in the edge of the patella, and we assess the integrity of the fibers, this fibrillar pattern, till the insertion in the tibia. Okay, again, we turn the probe 90 degrees to assess this tendon in the short axis. Very important to spend time assessing the, um, the correct pattern. Uh, all the tendon must be exactly the same. No uh, hypochoic areas or not uh, uh, differences. Okay. Now, the Hoffa fat pad. Below the patellar tendon, we have the Hoffa fat pad. 
Sometimes. Inigo, five minutes. Five minutes, okay. Sometimes we will notice some small amount of vessels. This is not uh, pathologic. But usually there are one or two, not, not, not more. Okay, like you can see here. I don't perform usually dynamic uh, evaluation of uh, patellar pad because it's not validated for today. Okay? So I usually don't perform. So I, I, I cannot show you uh, the procedure to assess. I've researched papers, and uh, there are two different ways, um, one with elastography, other with a movement, but no, not very clear. So I prefer to be uh, more um, practical, OK? Uh, here, this is the infrapatellar bursa, uh, infrapatellar deep bursa, and here, the superficial bursa. You can find some quantity of liquid here, but here is pathologic. Here it can be normal. And to finish, the rectus, ah, no, the medial collateral ligament, sorry. We place the probe here. You can see here the meniscus, the medial meniscus, and here the superficial layer of the medial collateral ligament and the deep layer here, the menisco femoral ligament here and the menisco tibial just here. And if we follow this toe, here, the superficial component finishes here. You see these images here, this is the pesan serinus. If I turn the probe here, you can see here the pesan serinus inserting in the tibia. To finish the proximal Ingo, I can give you five minutes for my talk uh, for you. It's a, it's you're, a gift for you. You're so generous. Thank you very much. I will finish. Uh, I, you don't have removed the... Okay, we will try. We will try. You have scissors? Okay. Keep calm, keep calm, eh? <laughs> okay. No, 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 no worry, don't worry. We begin here with the central tendon and we go we go proximal, following the central tendon. You see the muscle getting smaller till we reach here, this hyperechoic area here. This is the anterior inferior iliac spine. And this is the direct tendon in the short axis. We turn the probe 90 degrees. And this is, and this is the direct tendon in the long axis, inserted in the bone here. You can notice very well the shadow of the indirect tendon going to the acetabulum here. So to try to, to search this muscle with this underwear, it's more difficult, but I manage. OK. I uh, start here. I go distal till I see the shadow. You see here the shadow. OK. Then this is very important. Okay. I turn the probe without losing the shadow. Lateral. Uh, sorry, 30 degrees, and lateral, so just again here, 30 degrees, and lateral till we see more deep, till we see difficult with this underwear. C can you have uh, a lower resolution, please? Here, here, I go lateral, and here it is. And fo the fo uh, just get down the, fo the focus. And more, more deep, please. OK. You can see here, here, this is the indirect tendon inserted in the acetabulum. OK? With underwear. <laughs> Thank you very much.